Hey there, and welcome back to my channel. I am feeling chatty today, and I really want to talk about my plants. I have nobody to talk about my plants with. Um, so I'm going to take you off my tripod. I'm going to put you on a little handheld tripod, and I'm going to turn the mic around, and we're literally going to talk about every single plant that I own. Um, I'm going to call this, like, winter update or something, but there are a lot of plants here you haven't seen before because I've lost my mind. Honestly, that's the truth of it. Uh, my room is also a mess right now because I went out today and bought a whole bunch of Christmas presents. Um, so just... But, like, you don't care. Like, you're not going to judge. You don't care. Um, so we're going to talk about my plants. This video will be largely unedited, so if it's very long, I'm very sorry. Put me on in the background while you're doing other things. Um, that's about it. Lena is also having crazy time right now, so, uh, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen, but we're going to figure it out together. Okay, so this over here is the bulk of my plants. Um, I am going to take you through all of them individually and probably just talk a whole lot um, because I am chatty today. And um, then we'll we'll take you we'll take you through the other ones that aren't over here. So we'll start over here with I think my oldest plant, one of my oldest plants, this snake plant. I actually bought from my office at my former workplace. And then when I was laid off, um, the snake plant came back home with me. I actually would have left it there personally, but it came back and it hadn't really been consistently watered over the year and a half of the pandemic that it was there. It grew twice as much, like it grew a lot, but that's why if you notice like a lot of the fronds are like falling over there, they weren't watered properly so that's that's why that is how that is but it's just a basic snake plant that I bought at Canadian Tire because there were no plants in the newsroom and they needed some I also had a croton as well but I did get rid of it this right here is a fishtail cactus the lighting over here is really not doing it justice but it is just maybe I'll just take it down it is crazy. I always wanted one because I think they're cool. So when the, the, the leaf type things grow in, right, they grow in like this with none of the zigzags. And then the zigzags come out. It's really cool. I have it hanging off the side over here because this part gets direct sunlight in the morning because I have an east facing window. So that's why it's there. It looks like it's in a dark corner, but it's not. Maybe we start at the top up here. So this one in the back is called the Euphorbia Fire Sticks. I liked it because it was weird. And I don't know that I'm caring for it properly because a lot of the tips get like crispy and gray like this. See? But I don't know what I'm doing wrong because it's a Euphorbia, so you're not supposed to water it a ton, but I don't know, man. I don't know. It's just weird and I like it, so I just keep it anyway. This is a little tiny jade plant that I got for free at a plant swap. I didn't really want it, but they made me take a free plant because I brought a whole bunch. <laughs> That's the truth of it. Um, but I'm hoping that maybe someday I can grow it into one of those really cool jade plants that you see on the interwebs. So that's what we're hoping with that. In a similar fashion, the um, Hoya Carii, this heart-shaped thing here with the Kodama in it. Um, if you look on the internet, some things will tell you that it will stay this heart shape forever, and other things will tell you, like, if you read the comments, people will be like, well, I had mine for 10 years, and then all of a sudden one day it started growing into a big plant, and that's what I'm hoping for, that I'll have it for 10 years, um, and it'll grow into a big plant. I've had that one for a couple of months, and my other one for about a year. Um, so we're, we're getting there. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but when it grows into a full plant, it's literally just like a vine with hearts on it. It's very cute, so that's what we're hoping for someday. If you watched my Halloween video last year, you watched me put together this skeleton planter. It is a little bit, um, like, cockeyed at the moment, but that's fine. I glued this little Kodama sitting at the top. One of my favorite things is at night when I turn the lights out to go to bed, like, all the Kodamas over here glow. They're, gl they're glow in the dark, and it's just very cool. It makes me feel like I'm in the forest in Princess Lion, okay. But in this skeleton planter, we have just a little air plant that I have sitting in the clavicle. And then this golden pothos is actually a cutting that I got from my friend Alyssa, and I planted it in here, and it's doing very well. And then these are little pieces of Monstera adansonii. Um, <laughs> this piece over here is actually zip-tied to one of the ribs, because I couldn't get it to stand up, and I really wanted it to. Um, so this is this, you know. I'm getting a little bit worried, because this pothos vine is getting very long. Like, I might have to propagate it sooner or something, but we'll see. Now, in front of it is where we start to run into some problems. Because these, whenever you see these square planters in my collection, I bought them from the same place. And her name is Chlorophyll Culture. That's her sort of internet handle. And she runs a little plant store out of a local coffee shop. And it's beautiful, and I love it. And all of her plants are, like, rarer or hard-to-find plants, but... 
they're all propagations from her like mother plants so she sells them dirt cheap like I don't think I've ever spent more than 10 bucks on a plant from her um so I'm not very good with the names because I just buy them without thinking so I know this one's a Hoya I want to say Lachinosa of sorts but I also think that about the other Hoya I bought from her so I actually don't even know what kind of Hoya this is but it's I like it. It's beautiful. It's great. The one beside it, this one I know for sure, is a Bromark, uh, Philodendron Bromark's Fantasy. It is also very cute. It's only got two leaves, but it had more when I bought it, but I cut them off and I propagated them, so we will check my prop box after. Don't worry. Um, but yeah, so anytime you see these, that's from her. The plant in the back is my oldest plant. This is my, um, what's it called? Dracenia Janet Craig. I've had this one since the summer of 2019. That was one of the first plants I ever bought. And nobody watered my plants while I was in New Zealand that year. And the other two that I had died, but that one lived, so it lives back there now. In front of it is my only pokey cactus. What's it called? Rabbit ear or something? Rabbit something cactus? I don't know, but I bought it a pot specifically so that I could keep it kind of away from everything else. I just think it's cool because the cactus bits are like so flat, they're almost two-dimensional. Sometimes I regret buying it because I touch it and the little pokey things get stuck in my skin. Uh, but it's cute anyway, so we keep it around. I want to address Pickett because we don't do Harry Potter anymore because of J.K. Rowling. I understand this. But I had Pickett before we knew that about J.K. And I just really like Pickett. I don't, I didn't see the new movie. I didn't, none of that. But Pickett, just the idea of this little bow truckle who just swallows a newt around and lives in his pocket. I just think he's so cute. And like, what am I supposed to do? I had it before we knew what we know now about J.K. Rowling. I mean, we don't, when we throw him out? Absolutely not. I will not be doing that. So he lives here as my, as one of my couple of plant guardians with the Kodamas and a couple other things. I think he's so cute. And I rec recognize that J.K. Rowling is trash, but I had, like, what am I supposed to do? I had him first. Beside him is my little Shiflera, my little umbrella plant, and I'm very proud of him because I've had him f since, like, earlier this year. Like, I know he was here when I fell and broke my shoulder in May, so maybe I bought him in March. Um, and every Shiflera I've had before him I have killed, and this one is actually growing and doing really well, and I'm very proud of him and me, honestly. And I just, I just think he's neat. He's really cool. And then up here is my Monstera Deliciosa, one of my pride and joys. I've never had a plant do so well. When I bought this plant, it only had two or three leaves, and two of those leaves have since died off. So all of these leaves are plants that grew in my presence, and it's on a moss pole. And that is actually growing into. There's a couple of spots. I don't know if I can find any. There's a couple of spots where it is growing into the pole. Oh yeah, you can see right there. It's growing into the pole there. It's growing into the pole somewhere around here too. That one, that root is wrapped around, you can see. There's another root. Like, there's, there's, it's growing into the pole, but we're getting near the top, which makes me nervous. But, um, yeah, this is my Monstera Deliciosa. I've had it for a long time, and it's done very well for me, so I'm quite proud of him. In the middle, we have two more friends. So this is a moss agate. Is that how you pronounce it? I always pronounce it wrong, but it's just a little stone that I thought was cute, and I put it there. And then this is a little Totoro that I have no idea where he came from. He just appeared in my room one day. I was cleaning out my 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 mess over in the corner that I will not show you. Um, and he was there. And I have no recollection of buying him. No idea. Lena, you are okay. Lena, honey, you're fine. There's absolutely nothing you could want for on this entire planet. You're fine. Are you done yelling? No, she's never done yelling. Anyway, about this Totoro. He appeared out of nowhere, and so now he lives over here as another guardian of the forest. The little plant beside it is a little, it's just a horthia. It's nothing particular to write home about, but it lives in this little cat planter that it actually came in. Um, I live in Niagara, and one of our big things in the year is the Grape and Wine Festival. And my mom was, really wanted to go to the Grape and Wine Festival this year, but my stepdad wouldn't go with her because he's a butt. And so she went by herself. And when she came back, she had a blue and onion to eat and this plant. She had went to the little market at um, Gra Grape and Wine and come back with this little cat in a planter for me. And I just love that story because my little mommy bought me this one. So I keep it right up front here. It actually flowered for me earlier this year. And I love it. And it will live here in my collection forever and ever. 
behind it is my only anthurium, my first ever try. Um, this leaf was damaged when I got it. Don't worry, I didn't do that. Um, this is the anthurium clarinervium, I think. One of my local plant stores got it, and I bought it the day that that plant store opened, so that's great. This is the only leaf it's put out in the couple of weeks, maybe a month that I've had it, but you know, smaller than the rest of them, but looks great. Um, a lot of people say that anthuriums are really hard to take care of. I think clarinervium is supposed to be one of the more beginner friendly ones. In my experience so far, it's been fine, um, but we'll see. Oh, something else I didn't point out over here under the Monstera is that it's on that Bath and Body Works pedestal with the crow or the raven or whatever inside. I think of that right now because this, you can't even see it. The Raphidophora tetrasperma here is on a pedestal, but the pedestal is just a black one from the dollar store. While I'm holding this leaf out of the way, we'll show you the Raphidophora. Um, it's got a couple of leaves right now that don't look good. I don't know what's going on. Um, I've had this plant for a very long time, and it's on this plant trellis that my sister Emily actually 3D printed for me. It's got the phases of the moon. Um, I've been told that the Raphidophora tetrasperma is really thirsty, but I, I'm wondering if I'm overwatering it, maybe. I don't know, but that's that. In front of it is my Bath & Body Works soap holder holding this container of cuttings. Now these are all cuttings from my Mikens, that's on my desk, Philodendron Mikens, um, that I had in sphagnum moss for months and they never rooted. So I tried, I'm trying water instead and I put a piece of the golden pothos that we cut up from the bathroom a couple months ago on my channel. Um, that is there because I read somewhere online that if you put a pothos cutting in with other cuttings, it'll help stimulate root growth. So, we're going to see if that works. Here is another square planter, um, and I don't know what this is. It is a philodendron of sorts. I had the tag when I moved it up here. It fell onto the floor somewhere, and it vanished. It ceased to exist when it fell, so that's that. <laughs> this is my Dracaena twisty of sorts. It just lives here. I can't pick it up. It's too heavy for me, so when my sister comes over, she has to shower it. That's how it works. <gasps> the elusive heather. Hi, Heather. Hi, sweetie. <sighs> on the other side of the Dracaena Twisty on the Bath & Body Works Witch Hand candle holder is my Pothos, is it Pearls and Jade or is it Enjoy? I never know the difference. I bought it again on a whim from the plant store and so far so good. So far it's okay. It gets crispy ends a little bit sometimes, but I think that's just because I don't water it enough. It's fine. It's fine. And then in front of it is a spider plant that I bought because I didn't have a spider plant. And it's just a little thing. Okay, now we go to the second tier. This is my string of hearts with a stag beetle on the side. Um, it is angry and it hates me and I have rerouted this string of hearts a million times and unrooted it and rerouted it and it's always angry. This is always all it looks like. Um, but we keep it because it's still technically alive. It just doesn't look very full or very happy. Behind it is an air plant. I don't know that you can see it. Um, it's just little. It's fine. And then beside it, this is a Hoya tricolor, and I recently overwatered it, and it lost a leaf, and I was very upset about that, but it's okay. Now I just know. Let it go a little longer in between. Um, but I like the Hoya tricolor because the new leaves come out this bright red, and then they eventually, like, as they grow, they turn into this. So I just think it's cool, but it had two of these red leaves coming out at the same time, and one of them died. Beside it, in this little dome thing, is my latest attempt at growing seeds. These are daisy seeds. I don't know that they'll live. I've never had a success with any seed ever, but I just keep trying because I'm a glutton for punishment. Regular string of turtles. Um, this is one of the few succulents that I have ever had success with. Um, for some reason, it just keeps growing long, and then, I don't know, like, it was really short when I bought it. It's not the longest still, but it did flower, if you can see that. That little skinny thing there is a flower. Um, I think it's cute. I really like it, so we keep it. The Hoya Carnosa over here in my cute little witch pot. Um, let me just tell you, this Car Hoya Carnosa Compacta, that's what it's called. If it dies, we're never trying Hoya Carnosa Compacta ever again, okay? Because it's like my fifth one, and they're so difficult, and they just, they just fall apart. Like, they just, I just look at it wrong, and one of the little noodles falls off. I don't know what's up with that, but, uh, that's that. 
And then in front of it, this actually is another Hoya. This is the Hoya Courtesy Eye, I think. This is one of my favorite Hoyas. When I'm buying someone a plant, this is the plant I buy them because it just, it's a really prolific grower. You never have to water it. It's cute. It's beautiful. I love it. This is, this is already, I've already up potted it once. It came in a pot like these ones and I've had to put it up. Beside it is my burrow's tail. And this plant has lived longer here than I ever thought it would. I thought I would have, was going to kill it instantly, but I haven't. Now it is missing some of its little nubbins in a lot of spots. They just fall off. But we're doing okay, and there's a couple of spots where it's putting out new ones. I would love to have like a whole cauldron full of those someday. Beside it is my... Philodendron Brazil, one of my original plants. If you recall, I don't know that I ever talked about it on YouTube actually, but I had a plant of this that only had three vines and they were all pretty long and I had it going up a moss pole. But then I was like, these are only three vines. This is so stupid. So I cut it up and every single node I propagated, which was a lot, but then I gave some away to friends and then I gave some away to plant swaps and then I traded some and I only left myself with two nodes in the end. So this is me growing those two nodes back. They're doing quite well. This is this darker one here is one of the original leaves from the original plant. The rest of these are all new. Um, so we're just going to keep growing this and see what happens. I'd love to have a big pot of philodendron Brazil because I think they're pretty, but I don't know that that'll happen. We'll see. And then this one, I only bought this week. Let me just tell you, but I'm stoked about it because this is a philodendron painted lady. And to me, the painted lady is still an expensive, rare plant. And this was $18. Now, the only time in my life before this plant specifically that I had ever seen a painted lady in person, um, my local plant store had a really big one and it was like $250. Um, and I just think they're so cool because the, the petioles are like orange and then the leaves are just so pretty. Look at these. Look at these. Look at how pretty they are. I just love the painted lady. So I saw her and I didn't even think twice about buying her and she lives here. Um, yeah. So then coming over here, this is my ficus elastica um, of sorts. I think it was supposed to be a ruby, but it's lost all of its variegation. This is one of the reasons I wanted to do like a whole video talk talking to you about plants because like nobody I know would care about this, but I care about this. So I bought this plant um, and it had a bunch more leaves that all fell off, but it also had like a white squiggle up here um, that I think was it trying to grow new branch or whatever and nothing ever happened with it. I'm telling you, I have ha I think about this plant in like January or February and nothing ever happened with it. So a couple of months ago, I took my scissors and I finally just got the balls to cut that white squiggle off. And since I did that, it is growing. Look at this. That's new. That wasn't there a couple of weeks ago. And the other side has one as well. This one's not as long, mind you, but like... So, cutting that thing off, even though it made me nervous, was the right thing to do. And now it's growing again, and it's never grown for me, so I'm really looking forward to that. I would love to have a big ficus. That would be fun. In front of it here... Oh, actually, these mushrooms. I just bought those the other day, too. Aren't they cute? <laughs> this is my stromanthi. It looks bad, because a lot of the big leaves are crispy. Oh, helps if I am in focus, right? It looks bad because a lot of the big leaves are crispy, but if you just lift those up, it actually is putting out a ton of new leaves below. Um, I think it's just whatever conditions they had it in at the greenhouse, I obviously can't mimic here, and it can't sustain these bigger leaves, so they all die off, and then I get these smaller ones, which are just as beautiful. So, these older leaves can die. I don't care. Uh, I'll take the little ones. This is another air plant that I bought on a whim. This is another snake plant that I bought on a whim. I have no, I have no, no answers for myself. They're just, they, they're just here. And then in the back here is my other Hoya Carii, my other little heart-shaped one. I keep it, I can't even get it to focus on it, it's so dark. But I keep it in the back here because I don't care about it as much because it's not variegated, it's just green. So, it exists. In front of that though here, this is my original Hoya Carnosa, if you remember it. Um, it, it would like more light, I'll be honest with you. It would like a higher light spot, but it's kind of big. So this is the only spot I have for it. it. Makes me sad. And then this is the other Hoya that I bought from Chlorophyll Culture. Hoya Lecunosa, I think, maybe. 
I don't know, it's cute though. And then just behind that is my most recent attempt at a Monstera Adansonii, the last Monstera Adansonii that I had. Um, I don't... I don't know what was wrong with it, but all the new leaves were coming out damaged. It had problems. I tried to cut the roots off and re-propagate it. It didn't work. I did it again. I did it again. I gave up and bought a new one. So now we're trying again, and we will see what happens. In front of it here, this is my, um, I think it's a Neon Pothos. I've had this one for a very long time, and it hasn't grown, so I uh, potted it recently. And we'll see if that does something new. The Kodama that's in this one, I'm very proud of this Kodama because when I got it, in my package of Kodamas from Wish, its head and its leg had broken off, so I glued it back together myself. <laughs> oh, I also didn't show you the little raven here. These were like on for really cheapy at Michael's around Halloween, so I bought them and that one sits there. Down here, this is the most expensive plant that I own. This is my tiny little Monstera Thai Constellation. I have it in the back corner here because I don't want it to get too much light, and I don't want the white parts to get crispy. But this is my Thai Constellation. It just lives in the back corner here. It hasn't put out a new leaf for me since I bought it in September. But that's okay. Maybe someday we'll get there. <laughs> in front of it is a rattlesnake calathea that I sh just bought this morning. I don't know that this spot is good for it. It might be too much light. But there is only one way to find out. So we will see. Beside it is one of my friends. This is my ficus. Uh, fiddly fig, sorry. Um, Ficus lorata is what the Latin name is. If you remember, I bought this plant for $16 at the Real Canadian Superstore last year. And it lost all of its leaves except for two, and it looked awful. But I didn't give up on it, and now it's growing much better. And pretty soon, it's going to have to find a new place. Maybe even sit on the floor, because it's outgrowing its spot very quickly. Um, but I, I like him. I don't know how else to describe it other than I think he's good. Now this begonia here is my first time trying a begonia in a terrarium. I bought it thinking I could make it live out of the terrarium from chlorophyll culture. And she kind of told me like it needs a terrarium and I thought I could do it. All the, all the leaves fell off and it was just a stick. So now it lives in here. Um, but look at it. It's, it's growing back. It's got this bright green with the, 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 the pink dots on it. I can't get my camera to focus. How about now? Is it focused now? It's just light green with pink dots, pretty much. And it's putting out a whole bunch of new leaves, and it looks really good, and I'm very happy about it. Just sitting here in this little thing with all this sphagnum moss at the bottom, and that's where it lives. Beside it is my latest attempt at a um, Venus flytrap. If you watch this channel, you know that I've tried the Venus flytrap approximately 500 times, and every single time it fails, and every single time I try again. That is a theme with me. I seem to not be able to give up, but... This one is in another little dome thing. It's not really a dome. It's just like a little cloche. This is a cloche. This is, I don't know, but it's in there. The humidity is pretty high. We'll see what happens. Prior to this polka dot plant, every time I had ever bought one of these or a nerve plant, they die almost immediately. Like I look at them wrong and they die. But I've had this one for about two weeks now and it looks pretty good. It's actually putting out lots of new leaves and that sort of thing. So maybe it just likes being next to the humidifier. I don't know, but so far so good with this one. And then over here is my Maranta, otherwise known as my best friend. I have had this plant for a very long time, and it just does great. It's actually outgrowing its current pot. It's starting to stick the roots, roots out of the bottom. And when I eventually do up pot it, it will stay in this corner. The cute little cauldron that it's in will have to go somewhere else, but I'm just afraid if I move this plant somewhere else, it won't do as well. And so I'm not doing that because I'm very proud of it. Um, I love him. I don't know. I don't know what else to say other than I love him. And then this is another one of my recent acquisitions. This is a Philodendron Pink Princess. Um, I had one that I bought like a year ago, and it was just little tiny, and it was it was actually growing and doing really well. It was putting out a lot of new leaves. And then, I don't know if you noticed, but these trays down here are new. They're actually laptop monitor trays, um, because the tray that I had before, the wooden one, broke. I think I went way, way over the weight capacity, and it's leg on its one side gave out and none of my plants got hurt except for my pink princess it fell and it fell completely on its head and when it fell completely on its head like something in the stem in the middle broke and it just kept rotting and rotting and i would cut off bits and try to repropagate it and try to and i tried like a million different things and it just kept rotting so eventually i gave up and it was a little tiny thing too so this one is much bigger um 
but this is my pink princess now it's got this new leaf coming in um that like i only bought it yesterday so this leaf has been coming in um since i bought it i'm hoping it doesn't get stuck that was a problem i had with my other pink princess that the leaves always got stuck but um yeah so that is the overview of the plants in this sort of zone Moving slightly to the left, we have my little propagation station here. I bought this from Michael's earlier this year, and I think it's so cute. Um, so my propagations currently are just some Maranta, because it was growing out of control. These middle ones are the last of my uh, pothos cuttings from the one in the bathroom that we cut up. And then these ones over here are some more Mikan's cuttings, because I couldn't fit them all in the one over here. So that's all I have propagating right here. Um, and then this down here is my money tree. For some reason, I always wanted a money tree. I think they just look like they belong in the jungle. Um, it's not doing the greatest with me, but um, I'm trying anyway. Up here at the top is one of three little potted golden pothos that we have in this house. And all three little potted golden pothos are cuttings from that big one that we cut up in the bathroom. Recently, like the roots were growing so long and they were in my moss prop box still, and I was like, I'll just prop pot them up and keep them so that's what that is there it's just me potting up the uh, rest of the pothos cuttings other than the couple that I have in water still over here we have my syngonium of sorts it doesn't look the greatest right now because I let it get too dry um, but overall it usually looks much better um, I'm sure it'll bounce back and I actually have a couple little mushrooms that I put in here with a little pine cone and I just think it looks really cute um, so that's that and then here's my Again, my most recent attempt at an aloe plant. Um, for some reason, every time I have ever bought an aloe plant in my life, it dies. But I'm determined to figure it out, so I bought this one, and this is how we're going. Roger is on the move. Can you see him? Can my camera focus on him? Oh, he's stopped now. But anyway, in Roger's tank, we do have um, the snake plants. There's a gold pothos cutting, and then there's a piece of a... Um, ZZ plant there. Up here is a Dracaena lemon lime. I bought it from Walmart earlier this year, and it was actually originally in the pot that the painted lady's in right now. Uh, but about a week or two ago, I took it out to water it, and it was the roots were like encircling the bottom on the pot of the outside. So I decided to pot it up, and then it was too big to go anywhere over there. So now it's on top. Over here, you have not seen this yet. I bought a new plant light. It is just one of those halo ones. I don't know if you can tell, but it's just a circle. It was only about 20 bucks from Amazon, and I bought it to go with my Marble Queen Pothos, because I've had this one for a while, and it's never really grown for me. Um, and I would really like it to, because I think it's beautiful. I got one with really good variegation and that sort of thing. Um, so I just kind of wanted to help it grow, and also the grow light will help this pepper pilea peperomioides is what it's called um i actually met daryl uh daryl chung at the plant expo in niagara in like september and he wrote the book the new plant parent and there is a pilea peperomioides on the front of that book so when i met him i told him i've bought a million of these and i can't get them to live um what's your advice he said they're thirstier than you think they are and they want more light than you think they do so i'm hoping this will assist in the light situation some of the leaves that are falling off were falling off before i bought the light um but i just really hope it goes well because i i really don't want to kill another one of these everyone always lists them as like easy care plants and i've killed like a million of them over here in this dark little corner i have a chaflera of sorts that I am slowly letting die. Essentially what happened, this plant was doing really well. I just kept it on my table all the time. It was doing great. And then I moved it closer to the plant light thinking it would like that. And it rebelled and it lost a whole bunch of leaves and it got angry. So now I've just put it over here and we'll just let whatever, whatever will happen can happen. And we'll just see what happens. <laughs> pretty much but it looks unhappy now we're over here on my desk which is admittedly a little bit of an extra mess at the moment please don't judge me so this is my zz plant in the back that we rescued from zares right when the pandemic started it actually lost two branches recently so now it's only got four it had six and i was kind of like i don't know what's going on my zz plant is dying um and then it I, I did the math and i hadn't watered it in seven months so that would be why uh those two branches died <laughs> So now I will water it um, every now and then. Not often, because it is a ZZ plant, but every now and then. Up here in the front, this crusty looking thing is a Kalanchoe. Um, 
what happened here was I, every year on Halloween, I sit on the front porch by myself and I hand out candy because we have dogs and they exist in the house and it's too annoying to open the door and close the door with the dogs every time. So I sit out there in my witch costume and I hand out candy. This year, some guy in a Triceratops onesie came up to the house and gave me the cow and coey and then walked away. That is truly what happened. He like reverse trick-or-treated and gave me a plant. I don't know what's going on with that. I, it's like too fitting for me, but that is where this calanchoe came from. The flowers are dying, but the plant itself is not, and it's actually putting out new, um, new leaves in a couple of spots, so that's nice. This is since Candapsis picked a silver or something like that. It only has four leaves. It's only ever put out one new leaf in my care. I've had it since March. I bought, I bought it literally on my birthday. Um, it lives in this uh, mushroom planter my sisters bought me. It's very cute. I put the chopstick in the back to help hold it up because it was like flopping all over the place. Um, but I think he's cute. This is a global green pothos and honestly, I think it's more work than it's worth at this point. I bought these cuttings on Etsy. That was the only time I've ever bought plant cuttings on Etsy, and I've had them since June. I bought them while I was injured, and they have never grown. They have never put out a new leaf. They have never done anything, and now global green pothoses are everywhere, and I just feel like maybe I should just not have this. <laughs> At the top here is, what they call this, an elephant bush succulent? I don't know. I just think it's cool, and I have a real love for these woody stems, but I don't think I'm taking care of it properly because it keeps losing its leaves but it's a succulent, so I'm not supposed to water it too often, but I only water it like once a month. I don't know, I don't know what the problem is. If you have any idea, let me know. This is an Aglionema. I don't really have much more to say about it than that. I really, this is a plant that I could take or leave. It exists, it's never grown a new leaf in my care. It dropped two, low, two little lower ones, but it's here and it adds some pink to my otherwise very green plant collection. And then the last one over here, this is my pride and joy. This is my Mykins. If you remember, we built this uh, trellis in during Halloween, and I have since put a little fly on it because I think he's cute. Um, now, don't let the lusciousness of this plant fool you. I bought another Mykins just the other day and planted it in there because the bottom was looking kind of sparse. The top vines, they grow like crazy, and I rewrap them around, but there was hardly anything left in the bottom, so I did buy another plant and put it in there just like a couple of days ago. Um, but this is my Mykins. I hope someday it's a big, beautiful, lush spider web full of leaves. And overall, I just think it's really cute. And I'm its friend. So that's it for the plants in my room. But I just thought I'd show you some of the plants in this bathroom. Both bathrooms have one of these. A little pot of the Mykins cutting. Or a little pot of the Pothos cuttings from when we cut this one down. So this one, um, I'm actually surprised because it never really grew the way I thought it would. It put out these couple of leaves. You can't see past this one. It put out a couple of leaves here, and then it put out those two leaves up there, but it hasn't done anything else since, and it's been months, so I don't know what's going on. I don't really understand. I wish someone would just pot these into there. I can't do it because I this is too tall for me, and my mom doesn't want to take the vine off the wall uh, because then she'll have to paint it. <laughs> Um, but this is a philodendron moonlight. It was in my room. It's been in my room for a very long time. I ran out of space, so I put it in the bathroom, and no one has gotten mad at me yet. <laughs> so these, the ones in my room, and then the other pothos in the other bathroom. Those are the plants that I am responsible for. I forgot one. This is my, um, philodendron silver sword. I bought it as one big, long plant, and I cut it up, and these are the remaining nodes, um, that are growing. Uh, but now, I haven't actually looked in my prop box for a while, so I'm going to take my prop box here, it's this last coffin, down, and we're going to go through it. But yes, this is the plant that I forgot. I had a feeling I was forgetting something. So it just occurred to me that I forgot two more plants over here, but that's because I can't really see them. So this was a little bear, bear paw succulent, um, but the problem is it fell and it broke. So I'm kind of leaving it in there, hoping that eventually it'll put out something new, but if it doesn't, I will just throw it out because um, it looks really stupid right now, but I'm hoping it puts out something new. And then beside it is just a really tiny little pokey cactus, like really tiny. I bought it for just a couple of dollars at a local store, but it is real. And yeah, those are the two little, two little things back there, but now we're gonna go back to the prop box. So here it is. Oh my god, I can't get it open. Okay, 
So what do we have going on in here? Anything that looks like this, like the long and skinny, these are Philodendron Bromarks Fantasy. I need a light. Okay, that's much better. So this is my prop box. Anything that looks like this is part of the Bromarks Fantasy plant. Um, so that's like this. Uh, this one might be... I didn't think I had any lichens left in here. What is this? Oh my gosh, I wish these all had like tags or something because I have no idea what half of them are. Um... Oh look! Little roots on some of the Bromarks Fantasy cuttings. Yeah, I think there's just a couple of Mikan's cuttings in here. And I think the rest is Bromarks Fantasy. So when those grow to like a reasonable size root system, they will be potted into their mother plants, so they don't really count, but it also counts. You know, it's both. It doesn't count, but it does count, you know? Anyway, that's it. That's all my plants. Um, if you take the time to watch through this video and count how many there are, please don't tell me how many there are, because I don't want to know. <laughs> but it's also like, I work from home entirely. We don't even have an office anymore, so me having this many plants makes more sense than maybe the average person, because I sit here, I write a little bit, and then I go play with plants. And it's sort of my way to like keep my brain in a positive space throughout my work days. So it does make sense, I promise. But I really appreciate you sitting here with me and letting me just kind of ramble about my plants because sometimes it just, it just be like that. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you have not subscribed already. Um, and I'll see you in the, in the next video, which should be some kind of Christmassy vlog. And it'll include advent calendar stuff because uh, Lord knows I have a million. Um, and there will be more videos like that after that. Because if I'm going to do all these advent calendars, we're definitely documenting it. <laughs> okay, I'm done now for real. Bye.